Star Citizen 315. My name is Archangel, and this is your beginner's guide to ground combat. In this video, we're going to talk about four major topics. The first one being the inventory management system that was implemented in 315. The second one is going to be running a cave mission solo. And the third and fourth one, we're going to team up with some of our fellow Nova Marines, and we're going to run the bunker and the 890 mission. Now, we need to remember that this game is still in development, so that we are going to see some bugs and some glitches throughout the game. But we can still enjoy it, have some fun. The second thing that I want you to remember too is that this game is more doable and more enjoyable if you play with a team. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Okay, so our first topic that we're going to talk about is the inventory management. To get to this, you're going to press that I key and open up your local inventory. Remember that this inventory is specific to Bajini Point and Area 18. That's why this is called a local inventory. If you go to Hurston or you go to Crusader, you're going to have a different local inventory, meaning the stuff that you see here will not be at that local inventory. So with our inventory up, we're going to go ahead and start adding some armor to us. I'm going to start with some basic armor that I use on a regular basis. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to add this ADP Mark IV core, which is our chest piece. And we're going to scroll down. We're going to find the matching arms and legs. So we now have all of our external stuff done. Now we need to grab a backpack. So we're going to scroll over, find our backpack. We have one backpack that does already have some loot in it that we are going to utilize today. So to find that out is if you actually hover over your backpack, you right click, you can actually open it up and see what inventory is there. So that's the backpack that I want. So we're going to go ahead and hit double click or you can drag and drop it to the location that you want it at. This will now bring up all the inventory locations that you have on your body. So we have a backpack inventory, we have our chest piece inventory, and we also have a leg armor inventory. This allows you to put extra ammo, extra sights, some extra med pins, or your Cure Life paramed refills. You can also grab one of the tiger claws or one of the other IT tools that you can use to hack into servers and clear your crime stat, things like that. We won't talk much about that today. Um, we may actually get into it later on in a different video, but it's always great to have extra stuff on you for whatever cause. The next thing we want to do is we want to add some weapons. I personally like to run with three different weapons, a P4AR, which is great for close quarters. I also run with a P6LR, which is a sniper rifle. And then I also run with an arc light pistol. So I have my three weapons right down here. So we're going to double click. This will dra this will automatically put it onto it. Or like previously, we can drag and drop it to whatever location that we want. You can see with both of these weapons, once they load in, I do have a suppressor and a different sight on them than they typically have. This is because they are my personal preferences of running kind of silent through some of these missions. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our arc light pistol. And again, it's going to, once it loads in, you'll see that it has a suppressor on it right on the edge. And then also a sight up there as well. Now that we have our guns, we want to grab some ammo. So we go over to our lovely ammo tab here. And I'm going to go ahead and just scroll to my last page where I have singles of all the ammo that I want. So you can either, again, double click it like so, or you can grab it and drag it to whatever number it needs to be on. So we're going to go ahead and fill up our ammo here real quick. Now, as you can see, if I go over to another ammo thing, you can see that there's these different numbers that are in blue, this one through nine. This just tells me that all of the spots that I have inventory spot for, for my ammunition, are filled. So now that I'm done with my ammo, I'm going to grab two more tools. This is up in our utility area. One of them is that Cure Life medical tool that I was talking about, which is great for when you're running as a team and need to heal one of your teammates if they get incapacitated, or if you need to give yourself or a teammate medication to get them moving and progressing through the game. We're not going to talk a lot about the medical gameplay as it is very in-depth. But if you want to check it out, 
come back for a later video and we may be getting into the medical gameplay. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it. It'll go on my left side there. We're also going to grab the Pyro Multi-Tool. This tool with the right attachment is great for looting. I personally run with a true hold tra tractor beam attachment. So once that loads in, you can actually kind of hover over this and see what is on there. So if I double click it, it will let me know. And like you can see, there's there's some glitches occasionally. So like I can't actually see what's going on. The easiest way to fix some of these glitches, if you hit exit and then you just load right back into your inventory, it should pop up, which it does. So you can see that I already have a true hole tractor beam attachment on my multi-tool. So we can move on. The last couple of items that I typically grab, I typically will put on a med pin or two just to make sure that I can heal myself rapidly if necessary. So now that we have ourselves all geared up, let's head on over to Hurston or Crusader and look for some cave missions. Okay, so we have arrived in the Hurston system and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find a cave mission for us to run. So we're gonna click on that F2 button, bring up our Moby Glass, and then we're gonna go to the Contract Managers. The first mission that I highly suggest doing is going over to Mercenary clicking it and grabbing this at call to arms. The reason I suggest doing this at the start of every time you log in is because any time that you kill a enemy or a hostile that has a crime stat, you are going to earn extra credits that you can spend in game. So if they're a crime stat one through three, you're gonna earn an extra 500. If they're a crime stat four, it's an extra 700. If it's a crime stat five, it's an extra thousand credits every time you do it. So go ahead and hit accept offer. This will take you to the accepted page. In my opinion, I just always hit untrack here as well because the next time I do a mission, it will track that mission instead. Now we go back to our general page. We're gonna come down here to bounty hunter and we're gonna look for a couple of different missions. The first one that we're gonna look for is evict illegal occupants. This is pretty much the early on cave mission that you're going to see. I'm going to go ahead and hit accept on this and then we'll come back to the bounty page. But this is the mission that we're going to go to. And we're going to go to this cave over here on Aberdeen. Now, a couple of the other missions that you're see, going to see are going to be on this same page. They're going to be under the bounty hunter section. There's a couple that you'll see. You'll see one that will say something along the lines of a entrenched bounty in an Similar to these ones where in the parentheses it says VHRT, the entrenched bounty will have a question RT at the end of it. The, th the third one that you're going to see is one that says clear out criminal nests. It's very much like the evict illegal occupants one. It's pretty simple. You're going in there, you're taking out hostiles, you're calling it good. So now that we've got our contract, we're going to go ahead and jump to the, the cave and start this mission. So now as we approach our target location, the key thing is gonna be utilizing this blue marker to help us find the spot. The reason why is because when we get close enough to the target, that blue marker is gonna go away. So my tip to you is set your crosshairs to the center of that blue market and just hold them there. 90% of the time you're going to see your target if you utilize this technique. The reason I suggest this is because if you're doing this mission and the cave is on the night side side of the moon, you're going to have a difficult time finding it from the air. And the reason why is because it's such a small target. And on top of that, you don't actually get the light from the target until you're within a couple hundred meters from it. So this is why I suggest utilizing this blue marker to just kind of give you a general area of where to go. So as you can see, once you approach that 5,000 meter mark, that's when that target disappears. But if you keep that crosshair pretty much where that blue marker was, you're going to find your location with relative ease. So we're making our approach, and if you guys can see it, you can actually see the cave, the different coloration, right next to my crosshairs. So we're gonna make our approach, and you can see why this is very difficult to see at night, because it is such a small target that we're going for. 
So we're coming in. You can see it kind of getting a little bit more in-depth detail. And when you approach, you can actually see that there's some boxes around the front of the cave. Now at night, the entrance to this cave is actually lit up, making it really easy to see once you get in close. Approximately that 1500 meter mark is where you start seeing the light. So we're gonna go ahead and land and then get to the entrance of our cave. Okay, so we are at the entrance of this cave. Now you have to remember these are on the moon. So a couple of different things are gonna happen. One, gravity is a lot less on the moon than it is on the planet. So if I jump, I jump really high and I kind of float down a little bit. So it's good to remember that because if you're trying to jump around in the cave, you may over jump something or you may jump into a hole. You, it, a lot of different things could happen. The other thing is you don't want to run through the cave. If you run through the cave, you can actually trip and fall and it, 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 it becomes a pain in the butt. So I always suggest take it slow because the old saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So we're going to make our way in here. Now, I personally like to start with my sniper rifle. And there's a reason why is because if I'm suppressed, I can only, I can take single shots and take care of my enemies relatively easy and they don't, they won't really know where I'm coming from. Now, the biggest thing with caves is you're going to want to watch these corners because there are some really dark corners as you come around and you don't want to get tricked by the light and there will actually be an enemy in there. Now, when you first walk into the cave, most of the time these caves are the same layout. So you're going to walk in and there's usually one enemy right around this corner. So you're going to see some of these boxes here and this enemy is going to be right around the corner here. Sometimes they may actually walk all the way up here. Sometimes they may be farther back, like this guy. And you have to be careful where you shoot, because obviously that first shot of mine, I shot down here, but it hit the rock, so I just had to move a little bit to get my clear shot. We're going to go ahead and continue walking. So we have a body there. If you wanted to, you can pull out a tractor beam, like we've mentioned before. And you can actually carry that track, that body up to your ship and loot that body. I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll talk more about the looting in the bunker missions when it comes to the bodies and how you move them. But we are going to make a nice slow path down here. I'm, again, I'm checking those corners, checking all these dark paths. This next area, there's typically three enemies here. It's a kind of a small camp. So you can zoom in, you can kind of look around, see how the camp's laid out a little bit. As I as I move over, I'm going to I'm going to be real slow as I move over because sometimes these enemies are kind of tucked back. Now, you can see the shadow of this gentleman here. If I backed up, you can't quite see him. I mean, you can kind of see the shadow there, but if I zoom in, I can really see that. Now, if I move over just a smidge, I can go ahead and take that shot and to clear out that enemy. Now, because I have a suppressed rifle, his teammates, who are typically right around the same area, don't know that I'm there either. So I'm zooming in, you can see that flashlight moving, so there's an enemy right there. So we'll take that guy out. So there's one more typically in this area. I'm gonna kind of move real slow. I'm hugging this back wall, just so I can look for the shadows, and there he is, right there in front of me. We'll go ahead and take it. Now, at this point, I'm going to move across the cave to where I just shot that last guy because this is a solid wall. I know that there's nothing here. I'm going to come across and just keep an eye on that left side. I'm going to constantly watch those corners, watch these shadows. This is where if you come with a team, you can act more efficiently because you can see all these corners every single time. So I'm going to make my way around to this side and make sure that there's no enemies nearby. I'm not I'm not seeing any enemies. That corner's clear. I don't see anything. Before I head farther down, I want to check out a few things. One of them is being the loot boxes. So the caves have a few loot boxes that you can grab. Right now there's one right here and there's another one standing right here. So you can come up to them if you press that Enter a thought key, the F key, it'll bring up the ability to grab this and loot. You just click loot. This gives you the opportunity to drag and drop some of these into your inventory. Now, I've mentioned this before, but this is 
the first generation of this looting system. So there is going to be some bugs with it. The main one I have right now is that occasionally when you drag and drop something, it pops back over to this inventory. Now there's two ways that you can kind of fix this. The first one is to just continually drag and drop until it looks like this thing's going to load, which is what this does. And now it's over there. The second way is if you grab it, drag and drop, it pops back over. If I hit the exit button and then I loot it again, it's actually in my inventory now. This is a great way to just verify that the inventory is there. So that's a quick way of how to loot these loot boxes. There's obviously these two here, and I believe most of the caves have a third one kind of right around this area. I know some of the other ones do. This one apparently does not. So you have at least the two over there. Now, again, I'm gonna keep moving my way down in this cave. Most of the time, these caves are gonna be the same layout. You'll have some variations from time to time, but nothing too crazy. So we're gonna make our way down this cave, slow and steady, checking all these corners. Now, this kind of tees off here. There's a little corner here, and then a pathway here. So, there's usually nothing here, no enemies, anything like that. This is kind of just a little nook. But we're going to take this pathway down here. And as I approach, you can see the outline of some boxes. That kind of gives you a heads up that there may be another camp ahead. So I'm going to kind of slow it down. I'm going to get back into my crouch form and slowly make this corner. You can see some lights. I'm starting to kind of see a camp. And there's a gentleman right there. So I'm going to go ahead and stand up, take out that enemy. And usually there's a second one. There he is. And take him out. Again, I'm suppressed. They don't know that I'm there. If I take out an enemy behind another one, they're not really aware of that. So it's utilizing those little tactics. I prefer, personally like to use that suppressor all the time. Again, we're not running through the cave. We're just walking. If you run, you're occasionally going to trip over these things, and then it's just a pain in the butt to stand back up and interact again and get yourself moving down the cave again. Again, checking those corners. Now, if you notice, I try to stay behind cover as much as possible, or I try to utilize the wall as cover. This is just to make sure that I'm going to protect myself more often than I am anything else. And it gives me an opportunity to kind of peek around and see different aspects. So, obviously this cave, it kind of dead ends here. It actually drops down. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down to the next couple of levels. So I'm going to come over here next to the wall. I'm going to drop this way. We'll actually walk back up this way when we come back out of the cave. But we're going to continue to drop until we get to the bottom of this. Now you can see we already have six of our 12 targets taken out. Now most of the time, the next target is gonna be down one of these little passageways, just kind of out in, an, out in the open. The last five will be in the main cave system, farther, deeper down into the cave. So we're gonna make our way through these tunnels. Now, another aspect of this is you do have the peak feature that I mentioned earlier, this is, I can kind of lean left or I can lean right, you know? It allows me to be able to peek around things. So say I'm hugging this wall, I can peek around this wall a little bit better than if I was just standing up. Gives me a little bit more room to work with if I'm trying to protect myself. All right, so as we approach, I'm starting to see some lighting so I can kind of zoom in. There we go, there's my next target. So we'll wait till we get a nice, nice clean shot off on them. One less tar target to worry about. Now the next part is kind of tricky. Every cave has this kind of hole in the middle before you get to the next big opening. That's what's right here in front of us. Now there's a couple of different ways you can get across. You can jump from here to there, to the second one, to the third one, all the way to the other side. You can jump down, climb up, and then jump over. Or the one I like the most is I kind of get a running start and I jump to the third one. 
This is utilizing that gravity effect that we were talking about earlier, where you can over jump or under jump things. This is the perfect opportunity to show you what that jump is like. Because in normal life, on a normal gravity, you're not going to be able to jump from this platform to that third one. But with that low gravity, you can run, jump, and then land right on this little platform. You can see that's a big opening. I wouldn't have been able to do that in a normal gravity. So now I can just jump to the next section. And I crouch back down. Now this is where the last five guys are going to be. This is a kind of big opening in the cave. There's this nice little hill right here next to us. Then the cave makes a U around it. I personally like to utilize this hill as kind of a sniper hide in order to clear out my target. So I'm going to work my way on the left side of this to start. I'm going to try to be nice and quiet, slow. And we're going to see one target pop up right here to our left. We're going to go ahead and take him out. You got the next target right there. Third target. I need to reload. And then we'll take out the last two targets, which are typically right up above or right below us. So there's one. Wait till he stands back up properly. And there's one more. Usually, he kind of sneaks up and he's right underneath you from time to time. Oh, there he is. Right there. Like I said, they kind of blend in a little bit. So now that all of our targets are dead, we can make our way back to the surface and find one of those sweet bunker missions that we were talking about. So we've made it back to the surface. We're going to hop into our ship, and we're going to head back to Bajini Point. And we're going to grab some of our fellow Nova members, and we're going to team up and take on the bunker mission and the 890 mission. All right, we have our battle buddy. Now we're going to go ahead and look for one of those sweet bunker missions that we keep talking about. So bring up your Moby Glass, go to the Contract Manager, and we're going to look for two things. The first one being a call to arms to make that extra bank for your buck for taking out hostiles. The second one is going to be the Protect Site mission. Now this is the main mission you're going to see throughout the Stanton system as the bunker mission. This one, you have to remember, there's two NPCs. You have the enemy NPC, which are always going to be in a teal and red outfit, and then you have security NPCs. The security NPCs are going to vary on their armor throughout the system. Now, in this system, we're going to be in the Arc Corp. They are in a red and black armor. If you go to Microtech, they're in white armor. If you go to Crusader, they're in a white and blue armor. And then in Hurston, they have a black and yellow armor. Now, as we approach the Protect site location, we need to also remember that there are turrets on top of these bunkers. In the Protect site mission, this turret is going to be a friendly turret. It's not going to shoot at you. But if you want to make sure that you can loot everything and not worry about it, feel free to take it out and it won't attack you. Other bunker missions may actually have a hostile turret or three turrets, depending on the mission. So you just have to be aware when you're approaching. In this sit situation, this is a friendly one. We're going to go ahead and land right out front to make our looting a little bit easier. Now, like I mentioned in the cave missions, these are so much better to do as a team, which is why we have our battle buddy. Now, as you enter the bunker, you're going to come across an elevator that you're going to take down to the sub-level. This is where the bunker entrance is to start this mission. Now that we enter the bunker, you're going to see that it kind of narrows down and opens back up, and you're probably going to see enemies relatively quickly, which we do. So we're going to take out these targets so that we can make our way farther into the, the bunker. Now as we walk in, you're going to see that one of our team members is going to go left, and I'm going to go right so that we can clear the top section of the bunker before we head to the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and move around. We're going to check those spawn closets. So like as you can see right there, we now have an enemy that came out of that spawn closet. So we'll move our way over again. Now my partner's already made it way around the left side. I've made it around the right side. We're going to check the back section because there was another spawn closet there. No enemies. 
And now we're going to make our way downstairs. Now you have to remember these enemies kind of can get glitchy sometimes. So we have an enemy that just approached. But look at how that kind of glitched out a little bit. You got to remember that these are done in this first kind of iteration of bunker missions. So you're going to see these glitches. You're going to see these bugs. You just kind of get used to them after a while. So we're constantly hugging the walls and utilizing the cover throughout this mission to make sure that we don't get shot. So again, my partner's going to go left, kind of checking out that closet over there. I'm staying right. And then we're going to do the same thing. He's going to split left, go that direction. I'm going to split right. And we actually just finished clearing all the targets. Now that we've cleared the bunker, we're going to go ahead and loot. So you're going to look for different boxes that you can actually interact with like this one. Now you can find guns, you can find attachments, you can find ammo, you can occasionally find undersuits and helmets as well. Now you can see that it occasionally will take me two or three times to get that into my inventory. This is one of the current bugs with the inventory management and you learn a couple of different tricks of the trade to get it to work. The first one that I use is if you actually drag it two or three times, it'll actually get over there eventually. Or if you drag it once, exit out of the inventory, and then exit back in, then you will have it in your inventory again. So the reason why I suggested bringing a multi-tool with a tractor beam is so that you can loot the bodies relatively easy. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either pull all the loot off of them and then bring all the boxes out, or the easier method, which is the one that I'm using, is you're actually just tractor beaming that whole body to the elevator and then to your ship. Because then you can actually pull that inventory off the body into your ship without ever having to loot all these boxes. The downside with this is you either need to take out the turret or do not move the enemy bodies into your ship. The reason why is if you move the enemy bodies into your ship and you haven't destroyed the turret, the turret will actually view your ship as an enemy and it will start shooting at you. So either don't put the bodies in there or take out the turret. And this time we're not going to worry about the bodies because we're not taking out a enemy body. We're only taking out a security body to show you guys the benefits of this tractor beam. So as you can see here, when I get into the looting aspect, it brings up the external, which is the body, and it also brings up my vehicle inventory, allowing me to move all of that stuff into my vehicle inventory without ever once having to worry about carrying all these boxes. Now that we're done with the bunker mission, let's go ahead and get back in the pilot seat and head on over to the 890 mission. In order to do the 890 mission, you have to first jump to R Corp and then look for the boarding action in progress underneath the mercenary tab. Once you do that, go to your map, locate it in R Corp, and then you can go ahead and jump to that location. Now that we've made the jump to the 890, we need to know that this mission is actually a three-part mission. The first part is going to be a dogfight between us and two Cutlass Blacks. The second part is going to be clearing out all the hostiles that are aboard the jump. And the third part is going to be disrupting a download that is going on somewhere in the jump. Now this last part is an option. So if you do fail to get that, it's not a big deal. But if you do get it, you get a little extra credit. Now that the dogfight is over with, we can go ahead and position ourselves next to the ship. Now there are two different ways of getting into the 890 jump. The first one being the open hangar bay there at the front of the ship. Now you can land an MPUV in there or a Pisces in there for a rapid deployment of personnel into the ship that way. And it also gives you a way to load up some loot if you want. 
The second way, which is the one that we are doing here today, is through one of the docking ports on the port or starboard side of the 890 jump. As you can see, we're gonna go ahead and EVA from our ship over to it. So my battle buddy and I have now landed inside the 890 jump. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clear out all the targets while also looking for that data transfer. Now, when approaching this, there are a couple of different tactics you can do. In today's scenario, my battle buddy and I are actually going to split up here in the spa area. I'm gonna take an elevator up one floor to clear out the upper decks here. He's actually gonna take an elevator down to the lower decks to clear the lower floors. Now, if you're doing this in a larger group, you can actually have two teams of four. One team can land in the docking bay and they will clear out the whole bottom section. And then one team can come in through the docking ports like we did and clear out the top section. Now, most of the time these enemies are gonna be all spawned in the same area. You'll have a few here in the bar area and then the rest of them are gonna be out in the foyer area next to the stairs. The other enemies will actually be downstairs in kind of a grouping of the hangar bay and the engineering area. As you can see, I'm trying to clear all these rooms as I go. Now there are two rooms on either side of this, as well as downstairs. This is great to remember because sometimes that transmission is actually gonna be in one of those rooms. Now doing this in a smaller team, it's a little hard to help clear everything and the enemies, but when you do it as a big team with those two teams of four, it actually is really easy to clear out all these rooms and find that transmission extremely quickly. Now you may notice that I'm kind of sitting here waiting, watching, and the reason why is because you can't quite see it unless you zoom in, but there's actually a glass barrier between me and the enemy. So I can't just go ahead and shoot them. I need to either wait for them to pop up or I work my way up these stairs slowly and I can actually work my way around that glass and hit them from the side. Now, as I'm clearing out my targets up here, my battle buddy is in the bottom floors clearing out the hostiles down there. Once all the hostiles are done, the mission is complete unless you're still searching for the transmission. Now in today's scenario, we did not actually get the transmission, but we will show what it looks like here in a moment. Now there are a few things on the bottom floor that I would like you guys to be aware of. The first one being the elevator at the back of the hangar bay. This is a potential glitch where enemies may be. The second one is going to be the med bay that's right outside the hangar bay that you can actually set your respawn point at. The third and final one is just the engineering area. This is one of the locations for the transmission device. Speaking of the transmission device, sometimes you're gonna find them in those side rooms. And today, that's where this one was. This is what they look like. Now these can be spread out throughout the entire 890 jump, but this is what you're gonna be looking for to stop the transmission. Now that we are done with the 890, you can either loot some of these bodies, get some more gear, some weapons, or you can go ahead and jump back to your ship and search for the next mission. This brings us to the end of our beginner's guide to ground combat. There are a few more missions than the ones that we saw today, so go ahead and go out, check them out, or stay tuned for our next video on advanced CQB in Star Citizen. If you liked what you saw today, feel free and hit the subscribe button below or at the end of this video, or check out the links in our bio for our Twitch channel and come hang out with we are running these missions and much more. Also, if you want to join Star Citizen or you're interested in Nova, check out the links below for more information. And with that, I hope to see you fellow citizens in the verse.